What's going on everyone? My name is Twig and today we are going over my review of Crow Country, a survival horror game that was released early last month. It honestly snuck up on me without even being on my radar so I was pleased to see it doing so well on Steam. This game was developed by SFB Games and was released on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. The current price is $19.99 and as of right now it has a review rating of overwhelmingly positive on Steam so I just knew I had to give this one a try. To get my usual intro stuff out of the way, I've been reviewing games after I complete 100% achievements in video format starting earlier this year, uploading those here on YouTube, and then also posting my written reviews on Steam. Feel free to add me on there. My profile is linked down below. I'm always looking to add other achievement hunters or just other video game like-minded individuals. Crow Country was super fun to play through. There are 15 achievements in total, and it took me roughly around 7 hours to get my two playthroughs done. So without further ado, let's discuss this awesome game. Taking place in 1990, you play as Special Agent Mara Forrest. You find yourself investigating Crow Country, which is an abandoned amusement park. This park has been shut down for two years, and you learn that its founder, Edward Crow, has mysteriously disappeared. It is up to you to discover the secret behind his disappearance and unravel the truth of what is happening at the park. Right off the bat, after watching the trailer or starting the game for the first time, you can see that Crow Country is definitely set in visual style and design similar to other nostalgic PS1 horror titles. When you first start your playthrough, there are three different modes to pick from, survival, exploration, and the with the newest update, Murder of Crows. Murder of Crows being a new hard mode that was heavily requested by fans who have been saying that survival was too easy. In this mode, resources are more limited, Enemies are more aggressive, you can't run while you're seriously hurt, there are new rank requirements, and there is also a bonus unlockable for completing hard mode, supposedly. Exploration mode features no enemies, while survival is for those that want to play like a normal traditional survival horror game, facing enemies you either have to kill or dodge in order to get around the map. You have to at least play on survival in order to be able to get the achievements, but there aren't any new achievements added for hard mode just yet. There are a ton of different enemies and mini bosses that you have to face as you progress through the different areas. The variety is nice as it keeps the feel of the game fresh and really makes you think about using your ammo strategically. I will say you can return to your car at any time and refill your handgun ammo which kind of aggravated some hardcore survival fans. Um, but I'm not a hardcore survival fan so I thought it was a nice touch. There are a ton of puzzles that you have to figure out in order to advance the story. Some more tricky than others to figure out, but overall, not too bad. As you're exploring, if you get hit or poisoned, you'll have to take meds, which can be found in a lot of different spots, um, like vending machines, containers all over the map, or just laying around. Same with ammo and grenades. As you complete puzzles and explore, you'll slowly gain access to new areas by locating keys or combining items found in other areas. The map is very clear, and it's easy to understand. And there's also a fortune teller machine that you can use if you get stuck, but be warned this will tank your overall game rank depending on how many tips that you use throughout your playthrough. You are judged at the end by how many meds you used, tips you received, that sort of thing. One of the coolest things about this game is the combat. You can choose between the classic settings or modern settings, which is a cool feature to have given that some people may be familiar with the old controls. For me, Modern felt really good, although it did take me a little to get used to the aiming and switching weapons. Speaking of weapons, you have your handgun to start, then you get a shotgun, flamethrower, and a magnum. You can toss nades and even unlock secret weapons after you obtain A or B rank on a playthrough. It was also awesome to be able to move the camera angle inside of rooms to get a better view of your surroundings as you explore or as you take out enemies lingering in dark corners. If I were to give some tips and tricks that I picked up along the way, a couple would be to know that you can freeze enemies with menus, so like interacting with objects or pulling up your item menu. Another would be to save grenades and shotgun shells for larger enemies or mini bosses since there are some rooms that are pretty tight where you have to take them on. Um, next would be to search trash cans and soda machines for loot, but be wary of picking up items directly off the floor as they can be traps after a certain point in the story, which I did a few times. Disarm literally every trap you see, especially the poison heads. And lastly, to search every nook and cranny for upgrades like the laser sight and flashlight, which uh, really help during your playthrough. 
Luckily those are pretty easy to come across and there are also a ton of guides out there to lead you through pretty much the entire game. Getting all achievements will require you to S rank a run which means to never use the fortune teller, find all hidden secrets, and to heal no more than like 10 times. My first playthrough I received an A rank which unlocked two bonus items for me to use on subsequent playthroughs that in turn helped me to obtain that S rank on my next playthrough. All the other achievements are pretty straightforward if you just play the game normally and seek out all the hidden secrets. There is a point where you get to an arcade room and one of the rare achievements is scoring at least 5 points on the mermaid quiz game so that's just something to keep in mind along with upgrading all four weapons and defeating all four optional mini bosses. The end game ranks are probably the hardest to obtain but just follow a guide if you're having trouble figuring out where to go or what to do next. My bro played through the game twice completely on Steam Deck and he said he ran into no problems at all. He's actually the one who told me we had to try out this game and I'm glad we did. I'm ultimately not really a classic horror survival type of guy, but uh, this one was fun and easy to beat. Gameplay was smooth when I booted my save up on my Steam Deck and ran around a little bit. The controls feel great and the menus look solid, so I'm glad they have a verified rating on Steam because this title feels like it's perfect for the deck. This game isn't a hard one to 100% because there's not that many achievements. I guess the biggest hump for people who may not be into these types of games would be the aiming combat controls and the graphics, but if you're someone who loves the retro style graphics and the old school horror stuff, this title is a must buy. I personally love playing through it and experiencing the story surrounding Crow Country. This game was for sure a breath of fresh air. I'm already working on a Metroidvania style game and having a blast. I'm not super sure how long it's going to take to 100%, but be on the lookout for that one next. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to add me on Steam or join the curator group on there if you want to follow my journey to 700 Perfect Games. Like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I will catch you guys soon in the next one. Adios.